Good morning and good afternoon, everyone, wherever you may be joining us. My name is Peter Arvo, and I will be guiding you through this short audio-video lecture on God's sovereignty versus man's free will, a possible biblical solution. Ideally, you should have already viewed the three-part core lectures that begin with the B501 designation. This lecture also has a corresponding extended page briefing of the same name available as a single PDF or as three JPEG files, which can be viewed or downloaded for free from the TorchbearerSeries.com website. We will skip past this information regarding copyrights and information on possible college credit and certification in the Torchbearer series material, but if you would like more information, please visit the website www.thetorchbearerseries.com. Also, if possible, visit the website to check if there is a more recent version of this audio-video lecture and related page briefing documents. Before continuing, we first need to define some items and lay a foundation of understanding. To do that, we will provide the dictionary definition for sovereignty and free will, and we will also define God's sovereignty and man's free will by using multiple King James Version Bible verses. Sovereignty, as defined by Dictionary.com. 1. The quality or state of being sovereign, or having supreme power or authority. 2. The status, dominion, power, or authority of a sovereign, royal rank, or position, royalty. God's sovereignty as described by KJV Bible verses. Number 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Number 2. And upholding all things by the word of his power. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Number 3. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Number 4. He that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 24. Number 5. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 4. Number 6. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1. Number 7. Hath not the potter power over the clay, of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor, and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath, and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory? Romans chapter 9, verses 21 through 23. Free will as defined by dictionary.com. One, made or done freely of one's own accord, voluntary. 2. Of relating to the metaphysical doctrine of the freedom of the will. Man's free will as described by KJV Bible verses. Number 1. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6. Number 2. A man's heart deviseth his way but the Lord directeth his steps. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9. Number 3. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Psalm chapter 37 verse 23. Number 4. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 19 through 20. Number 5. I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. Psalm chapter 54 verse 6. Number 6. 
And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. Exodus chapter 36 verse 3. Number 7. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Genesis chapter 2 verse 16. The following are two different ways of thinking of God's sovereignty versus man's free will so it does not become a stumbling block to you. Please keep in mind that the reality is probably different than either of the examples presented and is more than we can comprehend. Also, the intent of this information is not to address the doctrine of predestination. The following is the biblical choose-your-own-adventure scenario. God the Father is like the master author whose long-term plot is contained within the whole Bible, which has a beginning, the book of Genesis, and an end, the book of Revelation, plus key bits of information throughout the Bible about the beginning and the end. What if God was the author of a choose-your-own-adventure story ebook called The Holy Bible, and while you were reading the story, you could choose to send a prayer email request to the author. Then the author would actually consider revising your story, so long as it does not alter the ultimate long-term global story, but rather to only alter the character's options for their own adventure. Is this possible? How much will God change the story of a character within his book based on the humble and loving request of a character? God provides us with multiple glimpses into how much free will he has previously provided people. The following are two examples. Two glimpses in the man's free will, Moses and Jonah. God tells Moses to strike a rock to obtain water for the people, Exodus 17.6, which Moses does. Later, God tells Moses to speak to a rock to obtain water for the people, Numbers 20. 7 through 8. Moses disobeys and strikes the rock twice instead of speaking to it. Numbers 20, 9 through 11. Moses' punishment is swift. Quote, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believe me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. End quote. Numbers chapter 20 verse 12. We know what God wanted Moses to do, and yet God allowed Moses to have free will to disobey, even when this was an important foreshadowing of future events. The rock represents Lord Jesus Christ, and upon Christ's first coming he was struck, nailed to a cross, but his second coming will be much different. Quote, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. End quote. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. Even though this was a significant event, God allowed for man's free will to alter events. Moses' decision was probably allowed because it did not ultimately change the outcome for the world but it does provide us with important insight into the free will God allows mankind to have. We will now go over the example of Jonah. God tells Jonah to go to Nineveh. Jonah 1-2 Jonah boards a ship in Joppa to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Jonah 1-3 God does not remove Jonah's free will and does not control Jonah like a robot. Instead, God, quote, sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken, end quote. Jonah 1.4 And Jonah told the ship's crew to, quote, cast me forth into the sea, end quote. Jonah 1.12 Jonah decided to do the right thing, quote, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. End quote. Jonah chapter 1 verse 17. The additional details make it sound as though Jonah died while in the belly of the fish, and then the fish, quote, vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. End quote. Jonah 2.10. Quote, 
So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. End quote. Jonah chapter 3 verse 3. Later, Lord Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh, uses what happened to Jonah to describe future events. Quote, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. End quote. Matthew chapter 12 verse 40. In these previous examples of man's free will, God shows us that he can use our wrong actions to still accomplish his ultimate goals, including using Jonah's plan to flee from the presence of the Lord and spending three days in a fish as a foreshadowing of God the Son's death and resurrection. As we go through the next sections about decision paths and decision hubs, Please consider the following example of God allowing for free will, with King David deciding what will happen next by the three choices God provides him. Quote, so Gad came to David and told him and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land, or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies while they pursue thee? or that there be three days pestilence in thy land. Now advise, and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. End quote. 2 Samuel chapter 24 verse 13 The following is simply for your consideration. Decision Paths Consider that God chose our first decision path by choosing us before the creation of the world. Ephesians 1.4 and made us in the womb. Job 31.15 Your first decision path ends at your first decision hub, which could be responding to a greeting in the womb. Luke 1.41 Each decision hub has possible decisions you can make like spokes on a wheel. You can only move forward, never backward. Decision hubs. Each decision path you choose leads to a decision hub. Each decision hub contains decisions you can choose that have been provided by God. You can choose a decision path that is in more agreement with God's ideal or in less agreement with God's ideal. The number of decision paths available at each decision hub is entirely up to God, and some decision paths may lead to the same decision hub. In summary, God is in complete control of what decision paths and decision hubs are made available to each person. Man's free will is in what decision paths are chosen. Hopefully this short lecture has helped you in understanding how God's sovereignty versus man's free will can have a possible solution. If you haven't done so already, your next step is to view the first of the three core lectures called the Torchbearer Series. Suppressed Manuscript History, Core Course B501, Session 1 of 3. The information contained in the core series is the result of thousands of hours of research containing around 700 references cited, and is designed with the intent of being a streamlined method to present evidence and information to dramatically increase your faith, trust, and love for God and His ways. Session 1 covers Manuscript Basics and Tempus Absumo to the reliability of text and B-Raid, as well as additional information you may not have ever known before. Until next time, take care and God bless.